It was an African day, like most African days, hot, humid, and miserable. An African daisy of a day. And George, king of the jungle, was surveying his domain from an air-conditioned treetop. Then suddenly... Help! Someone called for help! Help! Correction, someone called for help! Courage! George, come! Help! Seizing a nearby jungle vine, George swung lightly through the trees into a rushing stream and over a waterfall. A little while later, far downstream... <coughs> My George, that was quick. George, take shortcut. I didn't know there was a shortcut. Me too. Why Ursula scream? Oh, George, it's Shep. <coughs> Shep, good doggy Shep. Up, boy. What's the matter, boy? In the first place, George, he's not a puppy. He's an elephant. Shep, puppy. Big, gray, peanut-loving puppy. And in the second place, your puppy is ill. Ill? But he was perfectly all right this morning. I saw him eating green pawpaw melons on the North 40. George, why not call Africa's greatest witch doctor, Dr. Kilimandao? And the worried trio gathered around Ape's large message drum. What's his area code, Ape? We don't need it. Fortunately, this drum is a direct line to the doctor's office. A direct line? Yes. I call it my tum-tum, tum-tum. Doctor, it's George of the Jungle. Tell him what witch doctors don't make house calls. It isn't George. It's his doggy who is sick. Oh, that's different. I never could resist a bow-wow. That's a bow-wow? See, doctors say Shep is bow-wow. Big, gray, droopy nose bow-wow. Four years at Johns Hopkins for this. Well, let's take a look, see. Stick out your tongue. Not you, him. <coughs> mm, this looks like a tough case. Quick, I'll need 14 crocodile teeth, three fresh plucked gorgor feathers, and a leopard skin. Uh-oh, not in medicine chest. And so the intrepid ape man set out to get 14 crocodile teeth, three gorgor feathers, and a leopard skin. First, he dangled a tempting tootsie over a crocodile infested swamp. Now, George, get something to remove teeth. Unfortunately, every crocodile in Africa is on to that old stick trick by this time. This should do trick. Oh! What happened to stick? Oh, there it is! Oh! Hold still, George. I'm removing the last one now. Of course, pulling teeth is a little out of my line. There. Oh! Ow! Well, what do you know? Fourteen crocodile teeth and their beauty. Now for the gaga feathers, George. A few hours later, found the jungle king climbing toward the nest of a ten-foot gaga, prehistoric remnant of a day when birds ruled the world. With jungle cunning, the ape man inserted himself into the gaga nest to await the coming of the great mother bird. <laughs> Unfortunately, gaw chicks live exclusively on earthworms and swamp moss. <coughs> what? You won't eat swamp moss? You're no kid of mine, kid. And the great bird seized George in her talons, flew into the air, and dropped it. But during the trip, resourceful George had been able to pluck the three gaw feathers he needed. George, just lucky, I guess. So soon? Yes, but these shortcuts killing me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, doctor, is it a crisis? No, lady, that is a thermometer. George, go get leopard skin now. I don't want to sound like a smart aleck, George, baby, but you're wearing one. But that's my leopard skin. Look at it this way. Is a doggy man's best friend or not? But, doctor, Shep is an elephant. Look. George thinks he's a dog. Shep thinks he's a dog. I think he's a dog. What are you, some kind of a troublemaker? With that crushing argument, the matter was settled. Fourteen crocodile teeth, three gaw-gaw feathers, and the leopard skin. I think we can start to work. Get me plenty of hot water and some clean towels. You going to operate? No, I just want to freshen up a little. But what about Shep? Well, of course, I'm just a simple country witch doctor, but I'd say he just had a minor stomach upset. Too many green pawpaw melons. Drink this. Heavens, 
Holmes, what was that? Well, of course, Shep is a doggy, but if he was an elephant, that would have been a burp. And look, he's better. Good dog, Shep. Fetch. Ooh. But, Doctor, what about the crocodile teeth, the gorgor feathers, and the leopard skin? Aren't they part of the cure? Cure? These are the fees I'm charging you. How do I look? Better than George. You don't know the half of it, Georgie boy. Now, I'm just a simple country witch doctor, but I'd say those bushes you're wearing are poison ivy. <laughs> so long, folks. I gotta go to a meeting of the Medical Ethics Committee. Well, George fixed that chiseler. Get back crocodile teeth, gog-gaw feathers, and leopard skin. Yes, dear. But you know something? For a simple country witch doctor, he cast a pretty good magic spell. When you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a licking, <laughs> there is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for Super Chicken. But if you're afraid, you'll have to overlook it. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. He will drink his super sauce and throw the bad guys for a loss, and he will bring them in alive and kicking. <laughs> there is one thing you should learn when there is no one else to turn to. Call for Super Chicken. Call for Super Chicken. It all began with an airplane flight in the eastern United States. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seat belts. We are about to land at Providence, Rhode Island. Chauncey, I you sure that's Providence? What's it look like? Looks to me like there's nothing there. That's Providence, all right. Set her down, Edgar. But it wasn't Providence after all. Chauncey, we're in the middle of the ocean. I've heard of airports being way out of town, but this is ridiculous. At that moment on his way to Newport, Rhode Island, to blow the first flugelhorn riff at the annual jazz festival was millionaire playboy Henry Cabot Henhouse III. Known to almost nobody as Super Chicken. With him, his faithful companion, Fred. Known to almost nobody, period. Why are we stopping, Fred? There's no place to go in Rhode Island. Oh, come now. Rhode Island may be a bit provincial, but good heavens, you're right. Rhode Island is missing. It's gone. We must give the alarm. Within seconds, the entire mass of Pequod party line was buzzing with the news. That, of course, meant the whole nation knew about it in an hour. Rhode Island is missing. Plum gone. Nothing but salt water from Woonsocket to Watch Hill. The White House has just received a telegram which reads as follows. Deposit $83 jillion in the old oak tree by the crossroads, or you will never see Rhode Island again. Signed, Appian Way. Appian Way? You know him? We were classmates at Harvard College of Watch Repair. Tick-tock tech, we called it. There's his picture. Appian Way is the black sheep son of a fine old Rhode Island family, the Ways of Providence. I've heard of them. But if he was born rich, why did he become a thief? To stay rich. Oh. An old school chum gone wrong, Fred. That means... This is a job for super chicken. Right? Mix the super sauce while I slip into something less comfortable. Right. In a flash, Fred was back with a container of Super Chicken's potent potion. Ready, Super Chicken? Fred, is my cape back from the cleaners? Hanging next to the plumed hat. Oh, oh, yes. Let's have it, Fred. A uh, little too much cinnamon, Fred, and... <laughs> Once more, the puissant liquid worked its amazing transformation. And mild-mannered Henry Cabot Henhouse III became... Super Chicken! Quick, Fred, to the Super Coop. Within seconds, the fabulous Super Coop had taken to the air, while New England residents from Moose Up to Mattawamkeag thrilled to that cry in the sky. That's where Rhode Island used to be, Fred. Sure makes a nice-looking bay, doesn't it? Any sign of the state itself? Not a thing. Just a big gray cloud down near the water. Hmm. I shall use my super radar lenses to see right through that cloud. Aha! What, what? I'm gonna have to get these glasses fixed. But what about the cloud? No cloud that, Fred. That's a blanket of smog. And under it... Rhode Island. Hang on. Look! An enormous yacht. Yes. And it's towing Rhode Island out to sea. Super Chicken Super Brain had struck to the heart of the matter again. 
For on the bridge of that yacht was the renegade rich man, Appian Way. All right, men. Open fire. Fear not, Fred. Rhode Islanders are notoriously poor shots. What happened? That fiend must have sneaked in somebody from Massachusetts. Well, I guess that's the end of Super Chicken. But at that moment, the plucky foul Super Cape billowed out over his head like a giant canopy, and our two heroes wafted gently downward. When that chicken lands, fricassee him. Restrain your henchman, Appian Way. I claim the right of single combat with you. Single combat? <laughs> Nonsense. You can't refuse me, for I, too, am an old tick-tock tech boy. Impossible. It's true. Listen. Time to chime our alma mater for the mainspring of all schools. Tick-tock tech, great educator. Shockproof, knockproof, 17 jewels. Rah! Oh, you found the soft spot, Super Chicken. Single combat, it is. Now I have him, Fred. My super weapon is made of the world's finest steel. But so is his, and it's a 200-ton tank. Bye-bye, Bertie. Tremble, you malefactor. It is Super Chicken you face. It is Super Chicken you approach. It is Super Chicken you have just run over. Super Chicken. Just a flesh wound, Fred. Where's Appian Way? Just down the hill there. Down the hill? Yes, down the hill. For Appian Way hadn't figured on the effect of all that weight on one end of the boat. And as our friends watched in amazement, the yacht's bow tilted slowly upward, and the whole kit and caboodle sank to the bottom without a trace. Well, that takes care of Appian Way. Now to return Rhode Island. How? You forget my superpowers, Fred. I merely turn my tail feathers into a propeller, spin it, and just push them. Whoa, whoa. Gee, super chicken. Oh, well. So that's how Rhode Island was finally returned. Yeah, it was Rhode. And remember, when you hear that cry in the sky. <laughs> you'll know that Super Chicken still hasn't figured out how to land. Here upon the sun-drenched shores of the Mediterranean Sea lies Monte Carlo, scene of an annual race rally that draws the finest drivers in the world. Unfortunately, our story begins far away from Monte Carlo, high in the gloom-shrouded Transylvanian Alps. This is Monte Carlo, also scene of an annual race, the Monte Carlo Monster Rally. Headlights on your racing car, Tom. The Monster Rally is held only at midnight during a full moon, Marigold. Tom, boy, are you sure you want to go through with this race? Frankly, no, Gertie. Then why don't you withdraw, Tom? There's no such word as withdraw in auto racing, Marigold. Besides, there's a penalty for withdrawing. What is it? They cut off your leg. Look, there is Prince Monte Carlo himself. Who's that with him? His ex-wife, Sepulchra. Ex-wife? You mean they're divorced? No. She died in 1943. Mm -hmm. It's midnight. Start the race. What a field of contestants we have with us, folks. Who's the pretty one? Here's Lobo Fanguzzi, at the wheel of his four-claw wolf Ferrari Road Ripper. Yay! And apparently still recovering from a bad accident, Fred G. Frankenstein and his Le Monster special. <laughs> and there is the defending champion, the renowned auto racer and well-known vampire, Count Lou Gossi, fueling up his famous red corpuscle bloodmobile. <laughs> Who's the pretty one? And piloting the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper, the American challenger and good sport first class, Tom Slick. Ooh. 
Don't be disheartened, Tom. We're rooting for you. Me too, darling. There's no such word as disheartened in auto racing, ladies. Depressed, maybe. Hey, let's go. That moon ain't gonna stay full of much longer. Remember, I must be back in the coffin at daybreak. Very well, my dear. Will you fire the starting gun? <laughs> yes. Ow! Sweetheart, you hit one of the peasants. So? Peasant season doesn't open until next week. And uh, there they go. Uh, Tom Slick in the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper breaks into an early lead, followed closely by the Frankenstein Le Monster. But wait. Closing fast on the Le Monster is Lobo Fangootsie in the Road Ripper. Ha-ha. <laughs> now I'm going to use the Fangootsie grip to bite his tires off. <laughs> oh, Gertie, Frankenstein's two rear tires are gone. He is in serious trouble. Hmm. It looks as if Fangootsie can't get his wheel loose. Hey, what's the matter? Let the go. It looks as if the wolf man has bitten off more than he can chew. They're both out of the race, Gertie. Good riddance, I say. And Tom is still in the lead. But here comes Count Bulgosi and the Red Corpuscle. Just one more lap to go, Tom. They are all even. They're neck and neck, neck and neck. Please don't say neck. It makes me so hungry. Now the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper is pulling away from the Bloodmobile. Come on, old girl. Let's show them what Yankee ingenuity and know-how can do. It's no match for Transylvanian conning. Come, my little friends. Time to go to work. Oh, rats. Bats. I'll wager Count Lugosi is behind this. Not behind Yankee Millsap. Count Lugosi is in front. Gertie, the Count cheated. Tell me something new, honey. Away, confound you pesky bats. Hold on, town boy. I'm almost finished with my knitting. What are you knitting, Gertie Growler? What's it look like? A bat mitten set. Hang on to me, dearie. Got them both. Oh, that is wonderful. Would you believe it, hon? That's the first time I ever played badminton. Approaching the finish line, dirty guy Count Lou Gosey is still in the lead, and it looks bad for the gallant Yankee challenger, but watch this. A five-foot rooster has appeared at the finish line. <coughs> what a terrible thing to happen. A rooster crowing. <laughs> it must be daybreak. Betty by time for all the vampires. The Count's car is stopping. He's getting out. Now he's getting in. He's lying down. There goes the lid. And here comes the winner, Tom Slick. Here is the Monte Carlo Cup, Tom Slick. Congratulations, sweetheart. Come along, dearest. Time to feed the cobra. Oh, very well. Good heavens! Think nothing of it. It's not the first time my wife has lost her head over a pretty face. Congratulations, Tom. Marigold! You were the five-foot chicken. I can't believe it. Why not, Tom? Because there's no such word as chicken in auto racing, Marigold.